No matter how exciting the lessons or how progressive the educational system, the finishing bell is always welcome. School is over for the day, and when school is over, playtime begins. From the grown-up world of reading, writing and arithmetic, the children scamper back into their own world. A world peopled by their own dreams and fancies, their own hopes and fears. A world half real, half imaginary, in which few grown-ups can hope to trespass. <laughs> Playtime may mean a game or a walk according to the mood of the moment. Or it may mean setting out on some expedition, planned and prepared beforehand. Some old jam jars and sticks, hidden earlier in the day, are all that is needed for good fishing. This crude equipment brings these boys as much pleasure, and often as many fish, as the expensive tackle used by experienced anglers. fish safely in the jars and then home to tea. That was the plan, but an argument can upset the best of plans. Now one of those anglers will have some explaining to do when he gets back home. Serious matters in the workaday world of grown-ups can, in make-believe, become enjoyable pastimes for children's playtime. Even the job of looking after the sick. Anyway, giving medicines a whole lot more fun than taking it. And it may happen that what starts as a diversion, a playtime amusement, will give the boy or girl an interest which will last them throughout their lives, maybe helping them to find a useful place in the working life that begins where school and playtime end. A tree loaded with ripe apples is a temptation most boys find well nigh impossible to resist. To the boys, it's a good game, but it hasn't quite the same appeal for those with fruit trees of their own. Hayricks are just made for boys to play around on, or so many boys think. But farming is a serious business, and the youngster's idea of a good time doesn't always conform to the rules laid down by the grown-up world for the conduct of agriculture. So now and again, the world of play and the world of work clash. Since the conflict's an unequal one from the start, the world of play wastes no time in making way for the world of work. This is no time for jokes. But many of childhood's games have hearty endorsement from adults. For instance, the festival of Guy Fawkes, which boys and girls in England have been celebrating for well over 300 years. The Guy changes with the times, but the old chant, please to remember the 5th of November, gunpowder, treason and plot, never fails to win support for bonfire and fireworks.
Some spend their playtime more seriously, spurred on perhaps by childhood dreams, dreams that turn the first halting notes on the piano into the smooth rendering of a masterpiece. Obviously, many of the youngsters' favorite games need organization, for they require teams, rules, and competitive matches. But these games, too, are played by choice, not compulsion. They're played for enjoyment, not as a means of drilling the children. In these sports, individual initiative is tempered with the team spirit, so essential to training for citizenship in the world of tomorrow. Other games, the children organize and play themselves games that have survived only because they've been handed down from one generation of children to the next. Many of these games are older than recorded history, memories of the childhood of the human race.